Good morning, everyone. Welcome as we prepare to celebrate Holy Mass. Our Mass intention today is for the health of Tom Walsh. We also uh, say a prayer for Father Connolly, Father Louis Massey. Uh, they're no longer living in their rectories, so Father Connolly has left St. Columba for a bit because the two of them are making an attempt to uh, be able to get into nursing homes and hospitals uh, to do prayers and anointings. And part of that is they have to self-quarantine. So, uh, so he'll be live streaming the Mass tomorrow, but from where location where he'll be living. So we lift them up in prayer and all, perhaps we can pray for all the priests who are doing their mess, best to minister to the sick all throughout our archdiocese. So let us prepare now as we begin Mass. Christ, having risen from the dead, dies no more. Death will no longer have dominion over him. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we hear those words again. Just like yesterday, the Good Shepherd is the one who is willing to lay down his life for us. In dying, he raises us to new life, and so now let us die to sin, that we might share in his eternal life. You are sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, perfect light of the blessed, by whose gift we celebrate the Paschal mysteries on earth, Bring us, we pray, to rejoice in the full measure of your grace for ages unending. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The Apostles and the brothers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles too had accepted the Word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers confronted him, saying, You entered the house of uncircumcised people and ate with them. Peter began and explained it to them step by step, saying, I was at prayer in the city of Joppa when, in a trance, I had a vision, something resembling a large sheet coming down, lowered from the sky by its four corners, and it came to me. Looking intently into it, I observed and saw four-legged animals of the earth, the wild beasts, the reptiles, and the birds of the sky. I also heard a voice say to me, Get up, Peter, slaughter and eat. I said, Certainly not, sir because nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time a voice from heaven answered, What God has made clean, you are not to call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was drawn up again into the sky. Just then three men appeared at the house where we were, who had been sent to me from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to accompany them without discriminating. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He related to us how he had seen the angel standing in his house, saying, Send someone to Joppa and summon Simon, who is called Peter, who will speak words to you, by which you and your household will be saved. As I began to speak, 
the Holy Spirit fell upon them as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift he gave to us, when we came to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to be able to hinder God? When they heard this, they stopped objecting and glorified God, saying, God has granted life-giving repentance to the Gentiles too. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. A thirst is my soul for the living God. As the hind longs for running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. Thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Thirst is my soul for the living God. Send forth your light and your fidelity that they may lead me on. and Bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. Thirst is my soul for the living God. Then will I go to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then I will give you thanks upon the harp. O oh God, my God, thirst is my soul for the living God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever doesn't enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. Whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice, as he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. They will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Though Jesus used this figure of speech, they did not realize he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved, will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was never a thought that they were forming a new religion or a whole new way they saw themselves first and foremost as Jewish men and women who had an experience of Jesus who died and rose. And as they reflect upon it more and more, they understood him to be the Christ, the Messiah, the one that they are hoping and expecting to come, the fulfillment of their hopes and their dreams and their desires. Some like the apostles and some others saw this, understood it, but many others of the Jewish brothers and sisters did not. And so, in the beginning, I guess the thought was this was not going to go too very far. You know, it was being spoken of among the Jews, among themselves. But we heard last week how necessarily there was a movement out from Jerusalem after the death of Stephen because of a persecution and began to be a movement forward. Now, 
Here we have uh, Peter who had found himself out in Joppa and, and then was called to go to Caesarea to be with this family. And uh, word got back to the community in Jerusalem that he had entered the house of what's called the uncircumcised, the Gentiles. And Peter, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be mixing with these people. And he says, no, I have to tell you what happened. First he had this vision and it really fulfilled what Jesus had been talking about. Nothing, nothing that comes in to a person is unclean. Only what comes out is unclean. And I think this vision, he had this large sheet. Uh, he's being reminded of that again. You know, these, uh, these uh, deciding some things are clean or unclean. But then we have this powerful experience. Scholars look back at it and they call it the Pentecost of the Gentiles. This Peter is thinking back what happened to them. And it seems the same thing is happening. But now to the Gentiles? I mean, they're not part of the Jewish tradition. They haven't followed any Jewish practices or beliefs. But these men have had this experience um, and had this vision of an angel. Go get this man. Uh, Simon called Peter, bring him to your house. And Peter went to the house of these Gentiles and he entered and he began to speak to them about Jesus. And there was this sense that the Holy Spirit had come upon them. And Peter's beginning to understand what's going on. Yes, you can't contain the power of God, the Holy Spirit. There's a natural longing within every human heart for God. And that now these Gentiles are experiencing that. You know, it's like you're, what we're watching going on. I'm trying to, you know, try to uh, keep those social distances and stay away. So you watch it. I'm seeing it on TV. All these people going out indoors and into the parks, into the beauty of nature. Now, wh why not just stay home? Because there's something about the outdoors. There's something about the beauty. For many of us, being outside and looking at a mountain or a hill or, or a lake or, or just being in a park reminds us of the sense of something more than ourselves. This beauty, for some of us, it's, it's drawing us closer to God. You know, we're wired for God. We're meant for God. And so many people, the emptiness that they feel, they're trying to fill it in, in some way go out being in nature. Some people are filling it these days by just binging on, on Netflix. Some people are filling it. They're drinking a little too much. Uh, there's more opioid overdoses now these days again. Uh, ways that people are trying to fill, fill the emptiness. Well, we know that that emptiness has been filled by God, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has come to dwell within us. We are sons and daughters of God. We're not alone. Do not be afraid. If you get a chance, go on the internet. And uh, I uh, connected it to the my blog. It's called, you know, St. Columbo, the parish blog dot com. And I posted up a video done by Catholic artists from all over America. And they joined together, each in their own places, singing the words of be not afraid. Some of them are very popular. I know them. Others, I really haven't heard of them. But to listen to them sing, that's the Holy Spirit at work saying, be not afraid. I'm with you always. Come follow me and I will give you rest. So that's the powerful experience of, of Peter. They have come to realization that God is not to be contained that the Spirit blows where it will. There is at the heart of everyone a longing for God. And now this is the great beginning as the church sees itself not just an exclusive little group, but going out to all the ends of the earth. We pray now. We gather our hearts, our minds, all our prayers together, we place them upon our altar now. 
So we pray for the church. Keep us strong. Help us never to be afraid as we face the challenges of the day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world, all those entrusted with care of nations and peoples, Father, give them divine guidance in these difficult days. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those at the front lines of the pandemic and those who are just trying to help us live our daily lives and they really put themselves at risk, keep them all safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, everyone we promise to pray for. And we remember to our beloved dead, especially those who have died from COVID-19, that they may share in God's glory in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pause now. Please add your private intentions to mine. We conclude this prayer. We ask Our Lady's intercession. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers, sisters, my sacrifice, yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good, good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, all the clergy, religious, all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Columba, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to our apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Jesus stood in the midst of his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. Alleluia. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Eucharist. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there. Unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, O praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Prayer to the Blessed Virgin for protection. O Mary, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick. At the foot of the cross you participated in Jesus' pain with steadfast faith. You, Our Lady of New York, know what we need. We are certain that you will provide so that, as you did at Cana of Galilee, joy and feasting might return after this moment of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the Father's will and to do what Jesus tells us. He who took our sufferings upon himself and bore our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. We seek refuge under your protection, O Holy Mother of God, do not despise our pleas, we who are put to the test, and deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander about the earth, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for joining uh, me for Mass today. I pray for you and your family. Be safe. And I pray you have a good day.